What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another World Cup 2022 fantasy video. And obviously there's not too long now until the tournament starts. We've only had a really short gap between the Premier League ending and the World Cup starting. So there hasn't been a huge amount of time to do the regular videos that I would do. So I thought it was just best to show you what the current draft is looking like. Because it has changed quite a bit from the first one. And then we'll try and get it locked in ahead of the deadline on Sunday. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already let's jump into it all right let's look at the goalkeepers and defenders first of all and i'll run through what changes i've made for each of those positions as we go so one of them is the goalkeepers so i had costa before who i've still got but i had paired in with roche from uruguay but obviously i'd miss that they played on the same day so i've brought danny ward in instead so i can play him and if he doesn't get a clean sheet i can swap to costa now you know i love danny ward from fpl so part of it is that but he should also be a fairly cheap starting goalkeeper at 4.5 million the only thing i would say and obviously there's still a few days before we have to lock this in I don't know if he's 100% assured to be the number one because Wayne Hennessy is there as well so if you've got any insight into Wales or you're just a Welsh fan let me know in the comments below what you think is it definitely Danny Ward's shirt or could Hennessy start the first game because that would be a little bit of a worry I do think England will be a tough game for Wales but USA and Iran could they possibly get one clean sheet there maybe some save points along the way Possibly. I've stuck with Costa because he's only 5 million. I've spoke about this before in other videos. It's the cheapest way into one of the top sides without having to spend like 5.5 or 6 million. And Portugal are like 8th favourites to win the World Cup. So probably not going to win it. But in terms of group stages, should be fairly strong. So I'm quite happy with that pick. In defence, I've dropped Trippier. So instead of having double England defence, I've only got one now. I've got Luke Shaw. Um, I did put Trippier in my kind of best value players video and I do think he could be great value and I do think if he and Shaw are playing together Trippier is probably the better option but I don't know if there's a lot in it and Trippier definitely has more competition than Luke Shaw does now if England stick to a back three Trippier is almost certainly going to be nailed on to that right wing back spot because Walker can't really play there and Southgate just doesn't trust Trent Alexander-Arnold he's only really in the squad I would say because Reese James is injured but if England play a back four which is definitely possible Walker could play right back and they could have Shaw left back just for that little bit of extra defensive solidity like Trippier is a really good defender but obviously Southgate really rates Walker's recovery pace so I think we could see him start a right back if he's fit that's my only worry about Trippier outside of that I think he will start most games but if I'm only going to go for one I'd probably just go for Luke Shaw instead so that's who I've picked at the moment I've picked up Dumfries as well I did see rumors like a few days ago that he maybe picked up an injury but hopefully it'd be okay for match day one obviously I'm going to be you know factoring all the news we get before Sunday's deadline to make my final choices and I'll probably do one more team selection video as well but Dumfries at six million is so attacking for anyone that played Euro 2020 he was a brilliant option he was a bit cheaper back then but even for six million he's worth it I think he scored one or two times in that tournament as well and they do line up with a back three and he is just like if you've never watched him play for Netherlands at times it's just crazy how far forward he is he's almost as far forward as like the people that play up front for them so he's a really good option I didn't put him in my first team because I went quite heavy in midfield as you'll see in a minute I've downgraded those positions which I knew I would and then I've put more money in defence instead. So I've got Dumfries. I've also got Cancelo on the bench. Again, another attacking defender for Portugal, who I do think their defence is going to be pretty decent in this tournament, at least in the group stages. We can decide after that for the round of 16 quarterfinals how many players from these teams we have. But I'm okay having Costa and Cancelo double up. There's lots of good 6 million defenders. Like if we bring up the team here, and obviously you're going to see the whole team now. Um... You know, Dumfries, Kunde is 6 million. Lissandro Martinez is 6 million. I don't know if I would pay that for him. But Van Dijk at 6 million is a good option as well. Varane pretty much nailed. Mounier is a wing back as well for Belgium. So there are other options there. Alba, Silva, etc. I won't go into all of them. But I think Cancelo and Dumfries might be the best two. So that's why I've got them. I've still got Sosa from Croatia just as an enabler for 3.5 million. Maybe at some point I will downgrade my attack even more to upgrade that position to a better defender maybe one of the five million ones like Otamendi maybe even getting Trippier back but right now he's in there to enable the rest of the team and then you know how much I like uh, Mailer for Denmark again he's a bit like Dumfries very attacking but for an even cheaper price at 4.5 million and I'm pretty sure he's going to make my final team no matter what as long as he's fit and not injured 
All right, so looking at the midfield, and there's quite a bit of change from the first draft. The only two players that survive are Bergwijn and Eriksson. I've gotten rid of Sané and Musiala for Germany, and also Modric as well. Mostly because I just wanted to downgrade a lot of those positions to put the money elsewhere. Uh, and I'm not even sure Eriksson is definitely going to be in the final team. I'll talk about that in a minute. Bergwijn pretty much is. 7 million midfielder that's likely to play up front. That sounds pretty good to me. I think Depay might be missing in match day one as well. A lot of people pointed that out on my first draft video so there might even be more emphasis on Bergwijn to go and get the goals unless they just rely on Dumfries which could happen so he's almost certainly going to be in the team Ericsson I do like for all the reasons I've said before you know pretty much their talisman set pieces penalties and all that good stuff the one player I'm thinking of going with is from Belgium either Hazard if he's fit to start and we need to wait and see what happens there and if he's not maybe Trossard for 5.5 million and then use that money to upgrade somewhere else like that Sosa spot on the bench so I like Ericsson I just don't know whether I want to double up and I've put Scott Olsen in my team he's only 6 million a lot of people pointed him out now I've read a few kind of conflicting tweets maybe and articles and stuff like that about whether he's absolutely nailed on maybe not but when I've looked at recent matches for Denmark he has started more often than not but not in every single game but his record is pretty good for 6 million 23 games or appearances so far for Denmark eight goals six assists that is pretty nice so if he does get regular starts six million could be a nice a, a nice price basically again if Trossard's going to start he could come in for one of them but I, I just don't know I feel like Hazard's just one of those players that if he's fit, they're going to get him into that side. So even if he doesn't play match day one, if he can show that he's fit enough to play 50 to 60 minutes in match day two, I think he'll get put straight into that Belgium side. So that's the only thing that worries me about going for someone like Trossard. So for now, I've got Scott Volson in, but Denmark do play France in match day two. And that just doesn't look that ideal to me, unless I'm going to wildcard in match day two, which I don't think I am necessarily that's my main concern about it. You have to go and play France straight away. That could be a bit of a worry. If I'm going to hold my wild card until the quarterfinals, it doesn't matter quite as much. Um, because obviously we've got a few chances. I could mix things up a little bit. But ultimately, I don't mind holding most of these players through three match days um, if I need to. I've also gone for Perisic over Modric because he's 0.5 million cheaper. And to be honest, I just needed the cash. Modric is on penalties, but at least Perisic plays a bit further forward. Obviously, for Spurs, he often plays as a wing back. Still attacks, right? And does that for, used to do that for Inter Milan as well. You know, wing backs are quite attacking, but. In, uh, for Croatia, it should be part of the front three. So he's going to be even closer to goal. And we saw recently for Spurs, I think it was against Liverpool, right? He was playing in that front two, hit the woodwork twice. So for 7.5, although he hasn't got penalties like Modric, he is a bit cheaper and hopefully a bit closer to goal as well. So that's why I've gone for him. Obviously, let me know if you think there's better picks in the comments below. I am reading those comments to get an idea of where I should make changes. And then Rodrigo De Paul is basically an enabler. He's only 5 million. I don't expect a huge amount of goals and assists from him. I checked it out. 42 games so far for Argentina. Two goals, seven assists. So it's not an awful return for someone that's 5 million, but I'm not expecting a huge amount from him. Obviously, midfielders do get points for uh, chances created in tackles as well. So there's always the odd chance they'll get a few more points. Uh, and that is why he's in. And I also think that Argentina have just got a pretty good group and they're definitely strong favourites in it. Saudi Arabia, a really nice match straight away. So who knows? He could get me something. But because we have substitutes, you know, if he doesn't do anything, I'm very likely just to sub someone else on Sosa, uh, Cancelo, or whoever it might be. So he's really just in there as a neighbor. I don't know if there's too many better options for 5 million or below. There's Kazri, I guess, for uh, Tunisia. If he was nailed on for 4.5, saving even more money, but playing up front, I could look at him. But right now, I've got Rodrigo de Paul. And then up front, this is really where the money has gone. I've gone from Messi, Depay and Richarlison to Messi, Kane and Neymar, which looks a little bit better. I'm still planning on playing my 12th man kind of booster chip on uh, Mbappe to have him for Australia as well. And that will look really nice for match day one to have Mbappe, Kane, Messi and Neymar. That's the kind of fun you can have in these short format um, kind of tournaments. I will say that I'm recording this a little bit in advance. And like a lot of people in the comments section of other videos, I'm not quite sure how you activate that chip for the 12th man maybe they'll up, uh, update the website at some point i'd be very surprised if we can't play that chip in match day one that's what i'm currently thinking about i could use it in match day three or match day two if there's a better option the other thing i'm thinking about 
Is it worth having Kane and using the 12th man chip on Mbappe? Or should I try and get Mbappe? I'd have to find 0.5 million from somewhere. And having Kane as the 12th man instead and just having Mbappe throughout the groups? Possibly. But I do like Harry Kane. I think Iran, USA and Wales, there's goals in all of those games for England. He's their number nine, penalties, etc. So I like him. And obviously the upgrade from Richarlison, I'm... I'm a little bit worried about the injury he had for Spurs recently. Obviously, he's been back playing for them, and I'm sure he will be fine going into match day one. But I just wonder if there's any doubts over the amount of minutes he might get, whereas Neymar's going to play every single uh, minute they can have him on the pitch for, right? So I think that looks pretty nice. I've downgraded, like I said, the three midfielders, but still have a pretty solid midfield. But it's given me a much better defense and much better forwards. And I think that's where the kind of value or, or where the positions are that you should probably spend a bit more money and I know you've got the likes of De Bruyne at 11 million in midfield but I don't know if it's worth going out of my way to try and afford that so that's how the current draft looks if you've enjoyed that video make sure to give it a like hit subscribe if you haven't already and of course leave me a comment below to let me know how you think I can make this team look even better hopefully tomorrow I'll have a match day preview so I'll answer some of your questions and then on Saturday we'll have the final team selection until then thanks very much for watching give it a like hit subscribe subscribe and I'll catch you again soon.